Hey, it's Vicki and I am back with another book haul revisit. This is a series I do on my channel that is really fun for me uh, because it kind of helps to hold me accountable for the books that I bring in to see if I have actually read those books. So the way this works is I am going to watch a video, a book haul video from two years ago and see what books I hauled, which ones I read, which ones I didn't read, and from the unread pile, I'm going to pick one and put it on my September TBR. In the event that I have read all the books and it has happened, miraculously. <laughs> but if that happens, I have a sort of shelf space um, on my bookshelf of books from past book haul revisits. And if there is the chance that I read all the books in this haul, I will just pick a book from that stack and put it on my September TBR. So let's go back to August 2020 and see what I hauled and see whether I read them or not. Hey guys, it's Vicki and today I have a book haul for you. Um, it's been a couple of months since I've done a book haul and I have accumulated a couple and I wanna share them with you. So let's just dive right in. So the first book that I've picked up recently is actually one I've already read. I read it back in June, but I absolutely loved it and decided I had to have the book on my shelves because I definitely want to reread it and eventually have my children read it when they are old enough. And that book is All Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson. This is... Okay, so this is already a book I read, so I'm just going to fast forward. <laughs> The next one that I have is actually a book that was passed on to me by my mother-in-law. She read it and thought that I would enjoy it too. And it was one of those books that uh, the libraries, like her local library, did a, like a group read of. And so that's how she read it and decided to pass it on to me. But it is called What the Eyes Don't See. A Story of Crisis, Resistance, and Hope in an American City by Mona Hanna Atisha. And this is a nonfiction book uh, about, written by this doctor who was one of many people to uncover, discover, um, reveal, whatever you want to call it, the Flint water crisis in Flint, Michigan. So I'm really interested to read this because I would just love to get more of her kind of firsthand account about, you know, the work that she's done. Okay, so I'm going to stop it there. I did read What the Eyes Don't See. Actually, I read it this year, and I ended up giving it three stars because though I thought it was a good sort of jumping off point in regards to the Flint water crisis, uh, I feel like the book, <laughs> the, the doctor who wrote it spent a lot of time talking about her family, and not like, not like her family in the sense of like, how the Flint water crisis affected her during that time and like how it affected her family dynamic or whatever. It was like literally she was giving like a family history and I just wasn't interested in that for this book. I was interested in her firsthand account of the Flint water crisis. And though she did give you that, obviously, I felt like some of, there was just a lot of unnecessary stuff that she could have maybe written an entire different book about. Um, so I ended up giving it three stars and I definitely want to try to find more books about uh, this whole thing because uh, it is a topic I just wanna know more about and this, like I said, was a good jumping off point. But yeah, I did read it, it was a three star. Next up is a book that I picked up because of Ashley over at Bookish Realm. I heard her talk about this book and I decided I wanna read it. And it is called American Street by Ibi Zaboy. And it's about a young girl and her mother, who are from Haiti, and they move, are, are moving to the United States, um, and her mother gets caught up in U.S. immigration and is detained. So the young girl, her name is Fabiola, she goes on to the United States by herself and is staying with family in Detroit. And it's about her adjusting from her life in Haiti to now this very different sort of life that she's living in Detroit. And sort of the culture shock and whatnot of it all and just having to navigate this whole new world. Okay so I did read American Street and I, I think I read that this year as well. So yeah um, but I gave it three stars I believe because I really thought the main character Fabiola, I really liked her and the story was fine but the secondary characters, uh, her cousins, she has like, I think two or three cousins that she, when she moves to Detroit, she's staying with. They were annoying to me. <laughs> they were just like over the top, dramatic, 
um, I don't know. I just wasn't really jiving with them as characters. Uh, and then, yeah, the story, though interesting, also just seemed, I don't know, a little bit over the top. But the saving grace for sure was Fabiola and the audiobook narration was done really, really well. I believe it was Robin Miles that did that and she was fantastic. So it was a good book. It just wasn't like my favorite. The next one I have is one that I feel like I'm one of the last people to read, but I want to read it because I want to read it. <laughs> that book is Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng. And I read her second book, Little Fires Everywhere. I really enjoyed it. Uh, it was a good, it was a good piece of fiction. And this one I've heard is also very good. It is about a Chinese American family that live in Ohio and they are basically grieving over the loss of their daughter. And it's just a kind of a family drama about that, about family secrets and the ways in which people within families interact together. And yeah, I've heard it's just a great book. And Okay, here's another one that I have read. Uh, this one I remember, I also listened to it on audio. I gave it four stars. It was very emotional. Uh, and I kind of left it feeling like it was kind of a cautionary tale for me as a parent um, because a lot of the themes in the book were about the pressures that parents put on their children specifically when you are trying to live vicariously through your children and push your dreams and your goals onto them and how that can be very detrimental and so it was emotional it was well written uh, and Celestine actually has a book coming out this fall, I believe, or maybe it's in like December, but I'm totally, that's like an auto buy. I'm totally buying it because her books are awesome. And yeah, this was a four star read. Highly recommend it. Okay. So I have three more books to talk about, all of which I picked up in the bargain bin at my grocery store. I'm telling you, my grocery store has really had good choices in the bargain bin the last like month or two. It's been awesome. So yeah, I picked all these up from the bargain bin at the grocery store. Uh, the first one is My Absolute Darling by Gabriel Talent. And this is one that is about a girl, a teenage girl that lives in Northern California. And she lives with her father and he is very unstable. He is abusive in a number of ways. And they live sort of this somewhat sheltered life because he is a uh, like a kind of a um, what do you call him like a doomsday prepper <laughs> he's always like planning for the end of days uh, and like kind of wants to live off the grid and all of that stuff and kind of waiting for the world to end and so he is doing that and prepping her to do that but they have a very a very uh, sort of twisted relationship but she does however go to school and one day she meets a boy and they become friends and it kind of this this new friendship sort of makes her want to escape this life that she's been living and yeah okay I have not read my absolute darling but I still want to so yeah that's the first one on the unread pile I was really starting to think that maybe I had read all the books in this haul but nope not so the next book that I grabbed out of the bargain bin is The Mothers by Britt Bennett. And I know right now everybody's talking about her new book, The Vanishing Half. And I do want to read that one, but I kind of want to read this one first because it was her debut. And I've heard that it's a really, really good book, especially considering it's a debut novel. And it's about a teenage girl. It seems like a lot of my books are about teenage girls. I don't know, maybe I was like uh, subconsciously in one of those moods. I don't know. But anyway, it deals with a teenage girl who is grieving the loss of her mother. She starts to date the pastor's son and they have sort of a secret romance. And then they don't come out and say it in the blurb, but you gather from the blurb that she gets pregnant. And so there's, it's kind of scandalous. There's some sort of cover up sort of thing kind of happening. Uh, and I think it goes through the aftermath, the effects of this relationship, um, because they're like in high school and it goes into their adulthood and how this, this event, this, this relationship, this event, uh, the subsequent pregnancy, I'm, I'm assuming it's a pregnancy, kind of how that affects their lives going forward. 
Okay, I did read The Mothers and I really enjoyed it. Uh, I listened to that one on audio, I think. And I can't remember if I gave it three or four stars, but I really did like it. Uh, if I remember right, there's like multiple perspectives and it had interesting characters, good writing, and yeah, I, I really liked it. And I actually have not read The Vanishing Half, but I still want to because the writing was really good here. And so I'm sure uh, it's only gotten better. Um, so yeah, I definitely want to read Britt Bennett's other book, The Vanishing Half, but this one, really good. I, like I said, I think I gave it three or four stars. And then the last book that I got out of the bargain bin is a thriller that I just, I had to pick it up because the premise to me just, it sounds really interesting. The book is called The Chain by Adrienne McKinty, and it's about this woman who one day she, I believe, takes her daughter to school. Her daughter ends up getting kidnapped, and then she gets a phone call. And the caller tells her that if she wants to get her daughter back, she has to go kidnap another child. And the person calling her is also a mother whose son has been kidnapped. And it's, so it's kind of this chain reaction of people whose children have been abducted. And in order to get their kids back, they have to become criminals themselves and abduct a child. And so it's going to deal with, you know, Questions of like your moral compass, like what would you do to, would you commit a crime like that to save your child or put another person through what you're going through to save your child? How far would you go? Those kinds of questions. So this sounds like it would be like, I don't know, terrifying for one thing, uh, being a parent, that just sounds awful to me, but it also sounds very interesting. So, okay, I have not read The Chain, but I definitely still want to, especially after like hearing myself do the synopsis i'm like oh yeah that sounds so intense and terrifying so yeah uh definitely still want to read the chain it is unread all right so the book haul was uh was it six books six books i read four of them didn't read two of them so that's pretty good as long like i always say in these videos as long as i have had more read than unread i'm pretty happy so having two unread isn't horrible. So the two, let me set this down really quick. The two that I have not read, I went ahead and grabbed already. Um, so I, I have not read My Absolute Darling by Gabriel Talent. Um, so this one is like, I'm assuming it's just kind of, kind of like literary fiction, family drama. Um, I think I, I don't know if I mentioned it when, um, in this little, the little blurb. <laughs> that I was giving in the haul, but I've heard this has really good nature writing in it, uh, which I do enjoy. And then we have The Chain, which is the thriller that just sounds very thrilling. And to be honest with you, after attending the, um, the BookTube Besties virtual reading retreat that we just did last weekend, there was a lot of thriller chat going on because that was part of a discussion where that's what we talked about for an hour. And so I'm on a little bit of a thriller kick at the moment. And so, yeah, I think I think the chain is gonna be it because I wanna read thrillers now. Though I still definitely wanna read this one. Um, I think just right now, the mood I'm in, the chain is where it's at. All right, so the chain is going on the September TBR. I'm very excited to read it. And this one is just gonna go back on the on the shelves um, with the other book haul revisit books to be read at a later date. <laughs> Let me know down below if you have read The Chain. Is it good? Am I going to be thrilled? Am I going to love it? I don't know, but let me know. And you know what? If you've read this one, let me know as well. Did I make the right choice? Did I? Let me know. All right, so uh, yeah, that's it guys. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this book haul revisit. Um, they're always a lot of fun to do. So, yes. Uh, that's it. I hope you guys are having a wonderful week, and I will talk with you soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.